I'm so tapped up, and this is Samorost 1. This is a point and click adventure game by Emanated Design. I played a little bit of Samorost 3 a while ago, and I realized I hadn't played the other ones. I think I, I did videos of a couple other uh, Emanated Design games, but I figured I'd go back and get the series. This is kind of a classic set of uh, Flash um, point and click adventure games, like I said, that, which are just beautiful. Um, this one is a little bit rougher around the edges. It's obviously the first, a little lower budget, a little lower resolution. High quality sound effects, though. <laughs> you can kind of tell, one of the coolest things about Samros 3 is that even in these old ones, the, the static elements here, like this ship, looked really good, but anything they had to animate kind of looked a lot rougher. Um, I never really realized, uh, but going all the way back, uh, Samros 3, like, they, they really upped the ante in terms of the animating stuff. Speaking of wonderful animations, look at this wonderful, real human being here. That's right, Parker. So what do you, you want to smoke? Some... There you go, buddy. There's, there's a lot of smoking in these games. I, I, I never noticed that until I replayed, but, uh... There's a puzzle that involves smoking some manner of pipe or hookah, I guess this kind of is, um, in all three games. I'm not sure it's particularly intentional, but yeah, that's what's going on over here. There you go. I pull the thing? No? Well, this looks like a key, doesn't it? Oh, you can't click and drag. I'm expecting that from the later games. But yeah, this is really, uh, really lovely backgrounds. Obviously, the resolution here is, you know, good old early Flash game sort of thing. I'm not sure how old this game is. Um, it's quite a few years old at this point. Emanated Design, you might have, if you haven't heard of Samorost, you probably heard of Machinarium. They made that game too. And uh, Botanicula, and they're making, they make a lot of kind of, oop. Rip. Well, that didn't go well. Here we go. Let's get him back up here. I think the little dude's name is Samorost, by the way. I think that's... This is Samorost right here. Um, Alright, you wanna go? <laughs> I'd forgotten that they had, like, real human voices in, the, on, in these ones. Well, at least in this one. I don't think they're in two. Hello. Rip. What do we got going on here? There's there's some pixel hunting. Oh. I guess the screen's a little bit. Let's shrink that up a little bit. Recording flash games is really annoying. Um, they're kind of... There's, n there's never a way to get it right. There we go. That's better. I'm guessing we need to do something with you. Be majestic, beautiful creatures like Mr. Mole, Person Man, the little sheep thingers. Excuse me, no, I don't. I don't recall inviting you to my birthday party. No, get, get out of here. So in, I don't know how they make this the Samoros three images. Like they're extremely high quality. Then um, this one, they're kind of like you know, you can tell they're kind of pictures, photoshopped around a bit. But in Samoros 3, they're ridiculously good looking. Um, bird. Get the bird. Samoros man. Get the bird. There's, the, like I said, there's, there's some pixel hunting to be had. And there's some definite adventure game logic that happens in this series. But, um... It's never really too hard. I think the first two are pretty easy because they have these isolated segments. So you can't really ever get too lost, which is kind of a problem that some of the more classic point and click games have. That's right, Parker. They kind of, um, yeah, like there's some classic adventure games where you can, I guess that's all the way. Oh. Well, okay then. That's right. <laughs> um, like there's games where like you could make a mistake like 40 screens back. Like, at the very beginning of the game, and 
that was just it. You were just doomed. And sometimes the games would not even tell you that you had messed up. Let's see, here, classic adventure game logic. You click the little thing, and then a man with a light bulb for a head pops out. And he screws in his head into a, a fixture, which we turn on. And then it brings up an elevator. You know, very logical game. Uh, you know, I like logic puzzles, you know? Any logical person would have guessed that that was how you solve this. <laughs> like I was saying, the, um, they kind of isolate the puzzles just enough that, um, even if sometimes there is some pixel hunting involved. Hello, spooky face. I don't remember that spooky face. Cute. Um, there's some definite pixel hunting involved. Like, I, I remember being very confused in this level. But yeah, you, you want to eat the worms. And human face owl. This game loves its human faces. You want to know how much it loves its human faces? It loves them that much. Don't worry, there are less human faces as we progress through this series. I think they realized the human faces were a little bit much. Also, it's it's really impressive to see how much they've gone through. Like, yeah, you know, I'm talking about how these are classic and stuff. And it might not look super amazing, but you know, this was from an earlier time. And if you see the later games, they are absolutely beautiful, uh, particularly Samaras 3, but also Botanicula and Machinarium, which I never finished Machinarium. Everyone loves that one. And like that's the one that got ported everywhere, but Botanicula is kind of my favorite one. So now the creepy squirrel beast is happy. You can listen to the music. I don't know why you couldn't like listen to the music to stop the noise of the things, but you know, whatever. Prehensile tail. It's always fun. Psst. Now the owl's going. Oh yeah. And we into the ravine. I, I tend to be bad with, with point and clicks and just anything super puzzle related. Um, I tend to get, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm not super big into puzzles these days, but uh, these are kind of sized just right. And Samaras 3 actually has a hint book, which I'm not sure I realized in my original playthrough. I don't think I, I, I forget if I figured out what that option was. Oh wait, hold on. I actually wanted to get caught by that guy. Can I can I go back down? Oh, crap. <laughs> if if you if you progress while that guy is like watching guard, he like schloops up Samorost into his nose and spits him back out. <laughs> but I accidentally progressed too fast. And I like they tend to have little things you can like hover over and just you know, a little bit of extra interaction makes the world a little neater. I wonder what, I wonder what the, uh, the, the solution could possibly be to this mysterious device. Oh. <laughs> this one's a little easy. This one's a little easy, but, you know, it's the first one. And sometimes, I'd rather a game be a little bit easy than get a little, than get crazy stock when it comes to adventure things. So, this is obviously the science room. A lot of science happens in this oh I turned off the science I'm sorry let me turn back the science on there's a ladder button doesn't seem to do anything ah here we go ah 50, 50 it says Q 50 degrees so we got, there's a ladder there now. <laughs> yeah, Man Manita Design always has these really creative things and this one's a little basic, but I'm really excited for Samaras 2 and I think I'll get back to Samaras 3. I don't know how I'm gonna do that because I did like a quick look sort of thing and now I kind of want to play the whole thing. So I think I'll just like completely start over, I guess. I don't but then it might not be for a while, because I have a lot of stuff I want to get to. Hooray! We changed the direction of the thing! I forgot they had little loading screens. Back- this is from an era when Flash, like, loading 
like 500 kilobytes of a flash animation was like, yeah, this might take a little bit, so, you know, have a loading screen. And if the FCC repeals net neutrality, it might be that way again. Hooray! Yeah, 2003! Earlier than I thought, even. So, yeah, like I said, th th that is some, like, early Homestar era flash stuff. So, yeah, that's that explains the loading times and the resolution. Like, like I'm genu like I'm not kidding about 500 kilobytes being, you know, that'll, that'll take you a little bit to download. I think Homestar Runner had a rule where, like, they didn't want Flash cartoons to be over, like, more than, like, 1.5 megabytes or something. And that's why the Puppet Time videos were so, like, giga low resolution. Um, anyway, there is a Samros 2, and we'll be doing that very soon. Very soon, my, ch my children.